Chapter 6, you made it. Finding information. You're going to have to do a lot of research for your speeches coming up, and we're going to take a look at some ways to get some high-quality information into your speeches. After all, you want to remember it's not about you. It's about your audience, and you're trying to give them something that's going to change their lives, something that's going to benefit them in some way. And so we're going to take a look at what it means to find information, where you can find it, because if uh, you're like a lot of students, here's what I know. A lot of students will wait until like the last minute when they do speech preparation and they will hurriedly go to the internet and they're going to print out a few websites. But what we're going to look at is in this chapter, we're going to look at better ways to find some information. And it's going to take you doing this uh, before the day of the speech. Okay, you're going to have to put some effort into these upcoming speeches. They're going to be longer. They're going to be required to have PowerPoint presentations. They are going to be required to do all kind of things that we're, we're building. We're building resilience here. We're building the ability for you to do some research. And so let's take a look at what it's going to be and how we should be finding our information. The first thing you should always do when you do a speech is to create the specific purpose of your speech before you even start to research. Because if you have that specific purpose, it will be able to guide you on your efforts when it comes to finding that good material. A lot of people find it helpful to turn to specific purpose statements and they turn them into questions. Well, think about this. If you had this statement, to inform my listeners how they can determine if their drinking water is free of dangerous contamination. If that is your purpose statement, specific purpose statement, you could easily turn that into a question. You could ask, how can we know if our water is safe to drink? Well, then you can start your research far in advance of your speech date, and you're going to have tons of time to gather your information. Budget your time by using a detailed schedule. Put the exact date and time when you want to go interview an expert, the exact date and time when you're going to visit the library, and so on. Plan it, plan it, plan it. You know as well as I do, if we don't write it down, if we don't pre-plan it, we will have planned to fail. And so turn your specific purpose into a question and then make you a strategy on gathering the information to help answer that question. So here's some misconceptions. There's two misconceptions about research. The first misconception is that web searching is always faster and is always more efficient than using traditional library resources such as books. And now it is true that a web search can be really quick and successful, but you know, sometimes it's way more time consuming than consulting a book. I want you to think about this. You ever go to Google and just type in a search and you look and it'll come back with like 31 million hits. And then you've got like maybe the top 10 websites are even remotely relevant to what you're talking about. And through those 10, maybe only like one or two have a couple of statements that you can use. So this is a very big misconception. Uh, Carol Campbell is someone who is a cabinet maker, and she says that when she needs help on how to perform something really complicated in the cabinet making realm, that she can find information on the web, but it usually takes her about 30 minutes to kind of ferret through all of this advice that comes up on Google searches and stuff. And she also says that she can find the same information in about two minutes if she just goes to a book on cabinet making. So you can see sometimes books are far superior than internet research. Uh, and also books have illustrations and photos, and that's much more efficient for someone who's trying to find some information to put into a speech. The second misconception that we have is this, is that websites have all the basic information that we need. And that is so far from the truth. In reality, you think about it, these websites, they lack a great deal of material. They just kind of hit the highlights. They lack a lot of high-quality information, and that's what we want. We want to have high-quality information in our speeches so that we can give that to our speaker and remember that we, that can change their lives. You know, that they're going to have some kind of, it's going to have some kind of effect, and high-quality information will do that for us. So be careful about these misconceptions about the Internet. 
So let's say you're going to do some searching electronically, whether that's on the website or whether that's on some kind of a uh, um, Word document that you've downloaded, uh, especially if it's a big one. You might find this document to be huge, several pages, and there's a bunch of extra material in these things. To save time, I'm going to teach you a trick, okay? You can go straight to what you're looking for if you use the find command. Now you open up the find feature by hitting control and F at the same time. It opens up a small little search bar and you type in the word or the phrase that you're looking for, hit enter, and especially on websites and Word documents, it will highlight every time that term comes up in the actual resource that you're looking at. So you can use this to just really ferret down on this information and to skip all the extraneous stuff that really is just, just more confusing than anything. So we've got three major options when it comes to resources that you can use to do your public speeches. And the first one is this, the library. You can also use the internet and you can use field research. And we're going to take a little bit more time in depth in each one of these areas for a few moments. The first one we're going to look at is libraries. And in the age of the internet, I know some people think that libraries are really obsolete and they're useless, but that is so far from the truth. Libraries offer a treasure of resources for your speeches. The library is a very good place to begin your research for the topics you've got coming up. And in fact, even here on Louisiana College campus, we have a fantastic librarian. Uh, he's new, and he's running the whole thing, and there are some other people who are working in there who would love to help you. Librarians are going to be the top resource for you to find books and articles and websites that are of high-quality content. Most of the time in the libraries, you're going to have someone called a reference librarian. And this person is someone who is trained, and they are a specialist to help you track down information. That's right. You're not alone. We have reference librarians. Go see them and say, hey, I've got this project going. Where could I start? And they will direct you to the right databases, to the right books, the card catalog, whatever it takes to get that information for your speech. The reference librarians will help you. There are tons of books in your library. Uh, just, I mean, that's almost like a duh statement, right? But, but you, in these books, you can find this information. You can find articles. You can find reference works. These are going to be in printed format, and some they're going to be electronically stored in a database, and we have access to all of this stuff. We've got books and articles and reference works, and oh, my, I mean, we've got everything. You can also find in the library, and check this out, you can find some articles that you cannot find on web searches. Uh, libraries have electronic databases. They have magazine articles and newspaper articles. They have journal articles. And all these things in these databases are high quality or they wouldn't be in there. They're already vetted for you. And you can't find these things on the, on the Internet. You can't find them on the web search. And so a lot of these things, they're high quality. They're from reputable publications. They can be accessed using the library's computers or sometimes, and I'm not quite for sure, but I think we even have a link on Louisiana College's website to the electronic databases. You may not even have to go to the library. So the second source we're going to take a look at is obviously the Internet. It is a good resource. However, just by itself is probably not the best way to do research for these things. But there's a vast amount of info on the Internet. You know that. But finding what you need sometimes is really difficult. It's kind of like searching for tiny nuggets of gold and huge piles of dirt. They're hard to see. You can find one every once in a while, but you miss a lot of things. And to find the gold in those uh, dirt piles, you've got to learn to use the search tools that are going to match your particular project. And you know we've got search engines and these things like Google and and they're going to match the keywords you provided. Uh, this is a favorite option for most Internet users because you can often find what you need really quickly. But sometimes a search engine is going to give you too many hits, and it's hard to sift through all of that. And sometimes the material that you actually do find is really irrelevant. And so there's definitely some pros and cons when it comes to web searches. And if you want to find more about websites and articles and books, you can take a look at the appendix, appendix in chapter six of your textbook. Uh, you can also go to their website that they have for us. Uh, but you know, the internet, we've kind of, kind of hit this already. 
it's a great resource. It's a time suck as well. And so you could spend a lot of time researching on the Internet to look for high-quality information that the library has at your fingertips. The third type of information you can go for, the third major resource, is this, is doing your field research. Now, this means you're going to go out. You're going to gather information firsthand. You're going to observe. You're going to survey. You're going to interview. You're going to be part of an activity. Put yourself out there, and you will do yourself well because you will find some firsthand information. You can do an investigation. Uh, you can undertake personal investigations to get some information for the things that you want to talk about. For a speech on children who die because of the lack of seat belts on school buses, uh, a student has actually gone and visited various schools in the community and actually went to bus companies and compiled statistics on how many school buses had seat belts, how many don't. Her, her research yielded some really good, fresh, firsthand information that was not available in any book or on any website. Now, as a guy who used to drive a school bus, uh, there are reasons why most school buses do not have seat belts. Um, for fun, if you know the answer or want to look it up, email me and I'll let you know if you're right. Why don't school buses have seat belts? You can also use personal experiences. You know, in a speech on whether uh, family farms can survive financially, uh, one student talked about his own experiences growing up on a small farm. I mean, that's literally legitimate. He was growing up on a farm. He was, all, for all intents and purposes, a farmer. And so this personal experience came in, and it is definitely field research. You can also talk to experts, and this is what I would encourage you to do. If you've got a speech coming up and there is an expert in that field that you can get access to, um, I know some students have done uh, uh, presentations on Christian music, what it means to be a Christian recording audience, uh, excuse me, our artist. And they actually contacted a well-known Christian artist and actually got a phone call and talked to them and included that information in their presentation. You can come up with some really good up-to-date information that's not available in magazines and books and all that stuff by going and talking to experts in that field. Now, here's some tips for conducting a personal interview. Uh, you want to do as much research before you get to the interview as possible. Read your books. Read your articles on the subject before going in. That's going to help you ask intelligent questions and make yourself sound um, legitimate and smart. You will be able to get clarification and maybe get the expert to elaborate on some ideas that you've already previously researched. So prepare some questions. Decide ahead of time what questions you want to ask and what you want to do and what you want to use. Write them down on a sheet of paper. But be sure to put the most important questions first in case you run out of time. You want to make sure that you get the ones you really want answered up front and then use the extraneous questions for later in the interview. Another thing you can do is decide on how to record the interview. Uh, if you want to tape record it, you better ask the interviewee first. Make sure they're comfortable with it. Um, you know, you may not want to bring your video camera in and videotape it. They may not be comfortable with that. But above all, at least get a pad and some paper and take notes. Take copious amount of notes. But at the same time, instead of that, maybe just put some highlights down and bring your tape recorder with you. Just write down on that notepad some key points that are going to jar your memory about what the expert says. And as soon as you thank them and run out to your car, turn on your tape recorder and speak into it and talk about all the things and elaborate into your tape recorder what you just listened to. And that's going to help. That could be very helpful for you as you prepare. Uh, start in a really relaxed, friendly manner. You want to kind of get a rapport going with the interviewee first and then lead into the questions. Don't spend a lot of time, but you do want to take enough time to get a little bit of rapport going with your interviewee. You know, uh, since the person you're interviewing is going to be one of your sources, get their biographical information you want to be able to tell your audience why they're an authority on your subject. If you didn't get it, well, maybe follow up with an email. Um, you know, uh, you want to make sure that you get this stuff so you can include it in your speech. And ask your prepared questions, but also don't be afraid to get off script. 
if they start talking about something that's absolutely fascinating and they start just talking about something that you never even considered, go with it and take it in a spontaneous genera- uh, generation, a spon- spontaneous direction because you're going to absolutely love that. It's going to be fresh information for you and your listener and it may be something that just really piques your interest and you can be passionate about it when you present it. Another thing is, is when you got that expert there, ask about if there are other sources or maybe some visuals that you're unaware of that you could use. Who knows, that, that expert may actually have a booklet or a handout or a model or something they are willing to lend to you to do your speech with. Uh, they may give you a map. They can give you some kind of visual aid. Who knows what they can give you that will help you in your speech. But if you do that, make sure that you give it back to them, okay? Don't just take it. Just borrow it and bring it back. And at the very end, you want to ask if there are any questions that you may have omitted. You know, this is the expert. And maybe there's something they've been really wanting you to ask and you never did or something you never considered before. Well, give them a chance to let you know what you you may have missed. That is some valuable information there. Make sure you do this. End on time. If you've got 20 minutes with that expert, you schedule out 20 minutes, make sure you don't abuse that. Don't go 30. No, definitely go, don't go 40. Interview, uh, just stop it on time. If you need to schedule another time to come back, maybe that would be appropriate. Or if the expert is like, hey, I've got 15 more minutes, let's keep talking. You are definitely free to take advantage of that. But make sure you're courteous. Um, Take action after you get done. If you took notes, expand on it. Remember, go back to your Go back to your car and and, and record it or go back to your car and actually write out what they said. Turn those phrases and those words that you just wrote down into full sentences so you'll remember. There's nothing worse than taking notes and then getting back to your room and realizing, I don't know what I was supposed to think about this one word I just wrote here. So expand on it. Finally, when you're done, write them a thank you note. Send them an email thanking them. You know, this is the expert who took time out of their day to help you, and you want to be courteous to them. So maybe one day you can get invited back, or if it's something you're passionate about, one day that person could be your boss. Make a good um, impression on them by thanking them for their time. So remember, we've got our libraries, we've got the Internet, and we've got field research. Don't rely fully on Internet research for all the reasons that we've talked about. Do some field research. Do some library research, and your speeches will be much better for it.